Today, it's Professor Resnick again, and I want to continue to develop this, this uh, interesting equation of C plus V plus S that Marks, uh, that Marks developed here. Let me get it on the blackboard again. C plus V plus S, surplus value is equal to W. The numbers that we, we used last time was $2, the value of means of production, plus a dollar of labor power, plus a dollar of surplus, and the product cost and sold for four dollars. Notice something the following, just to, to, since we have it on the board here. Every single commodity that's produced and sold in capitalism, according to Marx, contains within it exploitation. That's a very different idea than exists in non-Marxian uh, theory. Okay? So I want to make use of these and produce for you a few indices that Marx talks about. But just before I do that, okay, let me put the hours on again. Four hours plus two hours plus two hours is eight hours. So let's have our uh, hours over here and our dollar dimension. Two different dimensions to, to measure a commodity. I want to go back to something we did before, before I develop for you these indices. Notice that the value of labor power, the worker gets a dollar. Now the question is, what does the worker do with it? Well, the worker goes out and purchases means of subsistence, consumer goods, to reproduce his or her labor power. So the worker goes out and buys commodities whose value is, don't forget, it's an exchange of equivalents, whose value is a dollar. So the worker goes out and buys, purchases, means of subsistence, that's in your reading, consumer goods, the value of which is a dollar. The value of which is a dollar. So the worker hat gets a buck, goes out and buys, let's say, apples. Let's assume apples are the consumer goods. Well, the cost of an apple is $4. Hence, the worker buys a quarter of an apple, okay? And what we're assuming here is the quarter of an apple is what is socially required to reproduce the labor power. Okay. How much labor does it take to produce a quarter of an apple? Well, it takes two hours, right? So, the value of the means of subsistence, this quarter of, a, you know, the, the total value, or the one quarter of an apple, it takes two hours of what? Necessary labor to produce the means of subsistence to reproduce the labor power, which the worker is going to sell the next day to the capitalist. So we're, I'm trying to show you, we're going back again. It takes two hours of necessary. The worker goes to work for four hours, use value labor power. A portion of that is two hours of, of, of necessary labor. What is that? That's the labor required to produce the means of subsistence, the consumer goods, to <coughs> sustain the laborer, that is to reproduce his or her labor power. And then the worker goes to work for two hours more above and beyond the necessary, doing that surplus. So another way of looking at this is this is the necessary labor, and here is your surplus labor. And this, again, is the labor already materialized in the means of production. Okay? So let me now develop, with all this in mind, let me now develop these indices. The first one is, not in order of necessary of importance, but the first one that Marx talks about is what is called the rate of exploitation, which is the relationship of your surplus labor to the value of labor power, which in this particular case, in dollar terms, it would be one dollar over a dollar, or 100 percent. The rate of exploitation, okay? Let's use a more provocative term. This is the relationship of unpaid, which I developed last time for you, over paid labor. It's an index of the rate of exploitation, or its rate, you know, how it changes over time. Unpaid to paid labor. The total of the unpaid plus the, the pay
paid plus the unpaid is what the value added of the worker, but the worker only gets a portion back. So the ratio is measuring how that portion changes over time, rate of exploitation. Another measure, <coughs> excuse me, by Marx is the relationship of the total value of the means of production to the total cost of production, which in this case would be $2 over $3, or 67%. Okay, So the first one, again, is the rate of exploitation. This one is an index of mechanization. Mechanization. Why? Well, the bigger the ratio here, okay, the bigger the ratio, the larger of the total cost is formed by means of production. So the, the higher the ratio, the more mechanized the society, because the more that society is spending on machines and tools and so forth as a proportion of its total capital, C plus V. Okay? So you would expect in capitalism for this ratio C over C plus V to rise, because we, the, part of the, the, the theme of capitalism is the growing value of machines and raw materials and so forth to produce all these commodities. The last one is, what's the return to the capitalists? Well, the last one that Marx develops is the ratio of surplus to the total capital that the, 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 the capitalist has to expend. Don't forget, the capitalist has to expend on means of production plus the value of labor power, and this is the return. So this is called, by Marx, the profit rate. I'll call it little r, the profit rate. Which in this particular case is a dollar over two plus one is three dollars, thirty-three percent, thirty-three and a third percent. Okay. So, if the capitalist is successful, the capitalist would be putting in costs, C plus V, production costs, and getting out a higher and higher numerator. The profit rate would be going up. It's an index of success if that rate of return to the capitalist is increasing. So these are your three famous indices, okay? And I just now want to combine them together in one kind of neat formula. And uh, Marx didn't do this. Uh, an American Marxist did this formula. His name was, he died a few years ago, Paul Sweezy. So the next step is to combine these into one formula, which we'll find useful to analyze capitalism. So let me start with the rate of profit here. The rate of profit is surplus divided by the cost of capital. Divide the numerator and the denominator by the value of labor power. So I'm going to divide the numerator and denominator by same V. And I'm going to rewrite this then as, uh, okay, as S over V, V over C plus V. So you know, a little bit of algebra, you can do this um, after the lecture, you can multiply uh, the numerator by V divided by C plus V, V divided by C plus V, that'll cancel out, that'll be one, and that'll give me this. Add C and subtract C. So as you know from high school, C minus C is zero. Well, I haven't done anything. But now I'm going to rewrite this. S over V, one, V plus C over C plus V is one, minus C over C plus V. So now I've got a formula for the rate of profit which combines together my two other indices. What does this say? Okay, one. A rise in the rate of exploitation implies an increase in the rate of profit. Number two. A rise in the composition of capital, this is the, what Marx calls the composition of capital, what I called last time the index of mechanization, or I call this time, the index of mechanization implies a fall in the rate of profit, okay, because it has a negative sign associated with it. This is a positive sign. So notice something. The profit rate is going in two different directions. As the rate of exploitation rises in capitalism, it increases, but as mechanization occurs, which we expect in capitalism, that profit rate is going to fall. And then the next question is, what difference does this make? Who cares? 
Okay? So the last step in this, which is very, very important for the, 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 the second message of capital, the first me message is that capitalism has exploitation associated with it. That's this one. The second message is that capitalism has a business cycle associated with it, is the one that we're going to now focus on. So what difference does a rising or falling rate of profit have for capitalism? So let me go back. Okay. The rate of profit is surplus value divided by the cost of production. But what do the capitalists do with their surplus? Remember, I started out by saying, what do the workers do with their wages? They go out and buy means of production. So the, the logical question is, what do the capitalists do with their surplus? Well, you remember what we did in the first part of this course. The capitalists take their surplus and they distribute the surplus to secure their conditions of existence. That is, they make all kinds of subsumed class payments so that they can survive and prosper. Now, I want to divide the subsumed class payments into, in, into two kinds of, of categories, two broad categories for this argument. One is distributions for capital accumulation. That's what the delta C plus delta V means. The delta C is the capitalist purchase of additional means of production. What you read in the newspapers, here on the, on the TV and so forth, as investment. They invest in new plants, equipment, means of production. The delta V is the expansion in what? Employment. Of what kind of labor? Productive labor. That is, labor that's going to be productive of surplus. Everything else I'll put over here, and I'll just prime it to show that we've taken it out of, you know, it's not the total, it's just what's left over after capital accumulation. So this would be all the payments for managers and uh, rents to landlords and uh, uh, expenditures on research and development and, 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 and so forth. So two broad forms of expenditures. I'm going to rewrite this because this is too uh, uh, laborious and too complex to have all these terms. So I'm going to call this portion K star, and I'm going to call this a different letter, the, la the Greek lambda. Okay? So we have a formula that the capitalists get a return on their capital, R, then they go out and they spend it in these two ways. K star, they accumulate, they spend more on machines and so forth, etc. Lambda, they spend more on managers, R&D, and so forth. Now watch. If the rate of profit falls, then one or both of these are going to fall. So what? The so what is the possibility of a recession, if not a depression. That's what's, that's what's involved here. A falling rate of profit means then, in terms of one or both of these, a decrease in the demand for labor power and a decrease in the demand for means of production. Okay. So if K star is falling, productive labor, the demand for productive labor will fall. If lambda falls, the demand for unproductive labor gonna be, will fall. And if the demands for those two different forms of, of labor power are falling, employment's going to fall. Wages and salaries are going to fall. The demand for consumer goods are going to fall. Bango, we have a possibility of a recession on our hands. So a falling rate of profit may imply a recession. A rising rate of profit and expansion. Well, you can see what Marx has done here. He's related the falling and rising rate of profit to recessions and expansions to the business cycle in a capitalist economy. So if we can put this together for a moment, the argument is that in terms of these indices, that a rising rate of exploitation will give us a rising rate of profit and the possibility of expansion. Capitalist expansion. A rising rate of exploitation, which is a bad thing, is connected to a good thing, which is expansion. You see the, the, the dialectic, the contradiction again. A bad thing is connected to a good thing more jobs, higher wages, and so forth, etc. 
a rising composition of capital, which is a good thing. Because why? Because we have more machines, more raw materials, you know, in, in society, we're using more of those, and hence the implications we have for rising productivity of labor, because that's what it yields. That's a good thing. That's connected to a falling rate of profit, that, that formula that I gave you, and that's a bad thing. That's a capitalist recession. Once again, the contradiction. Capitalism is filled with these contradictions, and Marx is now examining <coughs> this particular one because of its importance. Okay? Finally, you must be asking, is it possible to have these things connected? Yes, and that's the last por por portion of this course. That is, this good thing which has the potential of producing the bad thing, this good thing, also may produce a rising rate of exploitation. So in other words, a rising mechanization may not, in fact, create a falling rate of profit. It may create a rising because this thing is connected to the rate of exploitation. So to go back to this formula, a rising mechanization, which you might expect is going to push down the, well, let's just write it in, push down the rate of profit. This rising mechanization may push this up by more, I'll make a bigger arrow, such that this goes up and we don't have the recession. So Marx is now going to introduce this kind of complexity into his analysis of capitalism. And let me stop there.